In this procedure we're going to look at uh, 2A ANOVA and we are going to um, work as setting up a 2A ANOVA table, no replicates, uh, we're setting up the table based on a given set of information that I'm going to discuss, uh, uh, introduce on an ongoing basis throughout this presentation. So first off this is our example, three varieties of potatoes are being compared for yield. Okay so that's our primary variable or an important variable and the experiment was carried out Oops, the experiment was carried out by assigning each variety of potato to, at random to four different plots okay so essentially there's a second variable going on here and that is location okay so there's potato type or just type that's not how you spell potato potato type okay and there are three levels and there's location which is four levels okay now what would happen is that that would be a little bit clearer when we get to the data I'm just going to get to the data shortly so uh, one variety of potato in each of the four locations okay just to clarify that now the following yields of per plot were uh, were as follows okay so here are our four locations uh, expect to get a table like this in your um, a, a exam something like this um, so we have location uh, set up along the rows so that's going to be our a variable our factor a and type along the columns that's going to be our factor b okay and those are the um, a, the yields uh, for each plot for each type of potato so for example in plot 1 we had a yield of 18 for A 13 for B and 12 for C and so on okay now let's move on from that the first thing we would do is we would get the mean of each of the rows and columns that's an important matter so the mean of, let's do this here, let's do this in red, 18, 13, and 12. Get the row mean for that, and that is 14.333. Uh, the next one is 20, 23, 21, and the row mean for that is 21.33. Likewise, we move on to the next one again and get uh, 14, 12, and 9. And the row mean for that is, let's just check my book here, 11.666. And finally, the last one is 11, 17, and 10. And the row mean for that is 12.66. Okay, now what we also do is get the column means as well. So we're going to work down the first column here and get the mean for that. Okay, so the mean of 18, 20, uh, 14, and 11, that is, I make that to be uh, 15.75. The next one I make to be 16.25. And the last column I make to be simply. 13. Okay. The overall mean is going to be 15 if you work it out. Okay. So that's the overall mean. Okay. But we're not. Essentially, what I'm particularly interested in is this set of values and this set of values here the row means and the column means. So essentially, what I'm going to do is we're going to base this question on a key. Uh, value based on the row mean and the column means and it is as follows um, we'll do it here so the variance of row means and we're going to call that s squared r and essentially that is the variance of 14.33 uh, uh, 20, uh, let's go here, 21.33 three, and 11.666 six, 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 
and the last one 12.666 okay uh, working that out we would get find that to be uh, 19 point zero three seven okay so that's the, that's sr squared or s squared r that's going to be an important one shortly the likewise we get the uh, variance of the column means now okay and that is the variance of uh, where do we have it fifteen point seven five 16.25 and 13 okay so uh, we denote that s c squared okay and that is uh, by my calculations I'm just going to give you that out as I've written down here somewhere 3.0625 okay so far so good now what why do we need these? Essentially, the uh, the mean square for factor A is as follows: it is C times S squared R, and likewise the the mean squared for factor B is R times S squared C. Sorry, that should be subscript here. Okay. Okay. So C is the number of rows, sorry, number of columns, and R is the number of rows. Okay. Now, if you look back at our example here, it was there are four four rows and three columns. So C is equal to three. Okay. And that in that case, C is equal to three, and number of rows is equal to four. Okay. Now, uh, just as is an important matter, um, I have the um, the location set up along the rows. So this is going to be our factor A. The type is set up along the columns. So this is going to be our factor B. Okay, that's an important matter because you just have to sort of if you're given these equations here. They do depend on what are the rows and what are the columns. What are arranged along the rows, what are arranged along the columns. So, MS, let's just calculate them out. So, MS, oops, let's use black pen there. So, MS, oh, that's not black. So, is the number of uh, columns. So, that is, let's just actually write that out again. Uh, columns times S squared R. There's three columns. And SR squared, if you just look back over the presentation, it is 19.037. So the mean squared is going to be, let's just check it now, uh, 57.111. Okay. And the mean squared for B is going to be equal to R times S squared of C. That is, there's going to be four rows, and the col the me the variance of the column means is 3.625. So the me the mean square for B is going to be 12.25. Okay, so these are tr two important values. Okay. So what we're going to do now is set up our table. Okay. So we're going to have factor A, factor B, the uh, residual. Or error and total. Now, just actually, um, if you are familiar with interactions in two A tables, in two A ANOVA experiments, you might notice that we only have a single replicate there, so there's going to be no interaction term. So, now degrees of freedom. Okay. Sorry. First off. Uh, what do we have here? So degrees of freedom, sums of squares, mean squared. So we know this to be 57.111 and we know the mean squared for B to be 
two five. Okay, we still have to find out what this is yet. The mean squared for residuals. Uh, but let's go and look at our degrees of freedom. So we know that there's 12 items altogether, so that's going to be 11. Okay. The degrees of freedom for A is um, the degrees of freedom for A is there are A is the locations. Okay. So there are four levels for location. That's our A, A factor, factor A. So this is the number of rows minus one. This is going to be the number of columns minus one. Okay. Uh, so that is going to be three and two respectively. Okay. Now, just as a remark, what would that make the the degrees of freedom for residuals? Well, three plus two. Well, uh, plus the degrees of freedom for residuals has to add up to 11 so the answer there has to be 6 okay now we can also find out what the sums of squares are based on the fact that we already know what the mean squared is so I'm just going to go to a new page here and sort of let you look at this consider this for a second so in general the mean squared is the sums of squared divided by degrees of freedom but if you know what the mean squared is and you know what degrees of freedom they are you multiply them out to find the sums of squares okay so essentially what we have to do is multiply the two terms that we have mean squared and degrees of freedom to get the sums of squares so in this case we multiply 3 by 57.111 and we are working that out we get 171.33 uh, 2 by 12.25 that's 24.5 okay we still need sums of squares for residuals and we also need the sums of squares for the total now I'm going to cheat a bit and just tell you that the variance of the response variable just to sort of finish this off because you just you could uh, calculate it directly get the variance of all 12 of those items there but I'm just going to give it to you so the var variable response variable is 238 over 11 okay why did I give it to you like that that means that that's t SS total divided by n minus 1 and we know that n minus 1 is already 11 so the SS total is um, going to be 238. Now essentially what I'm sort of saying here is that uh, if you're in an exam situation and you get, a, uh, you get you might get this additional piece of information that the variance, I just actually just calculated it out there, you might get told this, you, you will get told this additionally that 2, 1, uh, the variance variance of y is equal to 21.636 something like that and that essentially you can round it up to 238 okay so let's put that in the here 238 and what the these the essentially the sums of squares have to add up to 238 so by process of elimination 42.17 okay Essentially, 238 minus what we have there already would give you 42.17. Okay, so all of the sums of squares add up to 238. Now we can finally compute the last mean square. So that is uh, the sums of squares divided by degrees of freedom. So 42.17 divided by 6, that gives you 7.03. Okay, now finally, all we have to do for, for our procedure what we have to do is compute the test statistic so the test statistic is the mean squares divided by the mean squares for residual or mean squares for error okay so test statistic is essentially the mean square divided by the mean square for residual also known as the mean square for error Okay, residual or error. So that is 57.111 divided by 7.03. That gives me 8.12. And in the second case, it is 12.25 divided by 7.03. And that is 1.74. Okay, so that's our table uh, all calculated. 
uh, we can sort of then find out if based on p-values if the or critical values or whatever that what the various um, uh, how significant these results are. Just as a remark, uh, if you're using the, the if you're using a procedure like this for the point of for the point of view of calculating uh, a critical value, the degrees of freedom for um, the first test statistic, uh, just to look it up, the degrees of freedom are three and six for this one, and the degrees of freedom for this one are two and six okay that's important so it's uh, if you if you're taking a pen and paper approach and using a statistical tables uh, okay that's it that's good chunk of work done